Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Latif al Baraych and joining me today is Sayyid Abbas. Now just to tell you a bit about Sayyid Abbas, he is the chairperson of ECU Guild, which is Edith Cowan University, one of the universities in Perth. He is also the founder of ECU's best new club of the year, um, which was uh, ECU Ahlul Bayt, Humanity Club. And alhamdulillah they, they were able to achieve uh, the first Arba'in walk in a university campus here in Perth. Um, so without uh, talking too much, I'll now introduce you to Sayyid Abbas. Salaamu Alaikum Sayyid. Wa oh, Alaikum Salaam. Oh, you see. actually bragged a lot about me. <laughs> Bro, what can I say? Mashallah, you've achieved quite a, quite a good amount. Inshallah, you can achieve even more. Um, but Sayyid, I uh, just want to discuss your journey. See, uh, you've come from Pakistan, you're an international student, and Mashallah, you've been able to achieve uh, beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful outcomes. Can you just tell us about how was it coming from Pakistan, a Muslim country, to Australia, which is obviously not a Muslim country. So, I don't know what I have achieved so far, but yeah, the only thing I achieved is you guys, Alhamdulillah, you really, you were really good sport when it came to Australia. So, um, I was in a boarding school. Uh, I studied all of my studies in a boarding school. I was 13 years old when I, my parents sent me to the boarding school because they could not afford me in the house. <laughs> So uh, I studied in a boarding school for six years. Um, I finished in 20, 2014. Surprisingly, still everyone is surprised that I got a really good grades. And uh, yeah, and they, my parents, my father actually thought about me uh, and he said, look, you go to Australia and study there. Oh, okay. Uh, my dream was to go in army and there was another university it's called Ghulam Isa Khan Institute. This is the best engineering uh, universities like the Dream University, like in Oxford, oh. in Pakistan. I wanted to go there, and luckily I got selected in that um, university, and uh, I passed all of the initial exams of army. And 15th August 2014 was the test day for me, the first test. I had my IELTS exam, which is like necessary exam to come to the Australia. I had to pay my fees for the university. If I would pay that fees, then I would go to the university. And the third thing, that was the test, the final test for the army. I had to choose one. I wanted to go to the army, but my father, uh, he said, congratulations for passing all the initial exams of the army, but sit in the IELTS exam and go to Australia. And that's how um, I said, okay. I took a big risk and I prepared for IELTS exam, uh, sorry, not prepared, I was already prepared. I sit in the IELTS exam, got an edge grade, so like 5.5, .5, which was like the minimum. If I would have even a point less, then I, I wouldn't be able to come to Australia. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh -huh. life on edge. And then uh, I'm here now in front of you. Wow, and what about like when choosing to come to Australia? Did you have the options of going Sydney, Melbourne? Perth or was it just like the first option that came to you was Perth and you took it or? Bro, uh, that is a good question and it just happened. It's, oh, okay. There was something, maybe you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't think us, but maybe some other reason. But, so you came to Australia, so what year was that, 20? 2015. Oh, so exactly. So tomorrow is the 15th of August. So. That would be your the test. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. my test anniversary. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty my good test time. fifth anniversary. But um, <coughs> so yeah, you came to Australia from Pakistan. Um, how was it settling in? Did you did, did you have to prepare like an apartment? Or did you did you know, know anyone over here or was it like? Bro, uh, like, how was that transition to moving to? Because I can't imagine myself. This is a very good question to be honest, and I was lately thinking about this uh, this thing. Uh, you know, when I came to Australia, I felt like everything was prepared for me. Like from the house to work, everything was like prepared for me. I did not have to struggle much, which is, which is Alhamdulillah, because I'm a very weak person by myself. I don't think that I'm a fighter or something, but Alhamdulillah, everything was prepared for me. And what I realized, my father in Pakistan, he supported a lot of students. Like he helped a lot of students because we live in the city, 
in Pakistan, like uh, like you can say Sydney, oh, okay. and people from different countries, so not country, from different areas in Pakistan, like where there's not universities, they come down to study in our city. And my father, he helped a lot of students in settling down in the <clears throat> in the education, and he followed the up, followed them up, and their parents, as telling the parents like everything, uh, for the students. And I think, in the reward of that thing, what my father did with that student, Allah has blessed me, uh, with a lot of good people here who, uh, from the airport till today, they are supporting me. Mashallah, that is that is really yeah. amazing. There's one thing I would like to tell you. <clears throat> when I stepped, when I put my first step. On airport, oh sorry, in, on Perth land, I didn't know where I am. Like, everything was new. Mm. Australian accent was very hard for me to understand. And even I remember on the airport, the person was asking me, uh, do you have, I don't know what, in your bag? And I said, sorry, sorry, sorry. And he kept asking, I saw him getting red because <laughs> I was not able to understand what he's saying. And then I said, look, I have this, 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 this in my bag, and if you are looking for anything else, then I don't have. And he said, "Okay, move." <laughs> uh, that's that was the initial situation for me when I walked in. Oh, so then, it wasn't a very friendly. Oh, well, not very friendly. Plus, not very good English. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I was an English debater in Pakistan. I uh, I I won state debate competition. I was third, not one actually, and uh, I went for the nationals as well. Was fifth or fourth, mm. but. I was wrong about myself that my English is good when I came to Australia. <laughs> but when I put the first step, Latif, on the land of birth, I felt like I'm somewhere else. Hmm. Like, you mean like I, I was so confused. At the same time, I was so scared. Hmm. And I had a feeling of responsibility. Like I was feeling that I'm in Australia means I have a responsibility to do something. I have a responsibility to represent my parents. At the same time, I was scared that what if I I, am, I don't do that properly? I will embarrass. And then my father has invested a lot in me. And he, because coming to Australia is not a very easy thing. You have to spend a lot of money. Mm. And you, you're you paying a lot of money as well. And uh, I don't know, I was very scared. I said, man, what if I don't do what my parents are uh, expecting me to do here i will dis uh, i will embarrass them in front of the family and vestige of money a lot of things and then i was scared oh. but then look alhamdulillah if i look five years ago when i came to australia when i started studying i was actually very scared of studying as well let see when i was in pakistan I, I used to think that i won't be able to pass even a single exam in australia i was taking it very very hard mm. I, I, I remember that I was laying down my bed in my room, I was looking at the roof, I had the roof same roof like this in my room, literally, I, it's, it's my room, if I lay down, it's my room, <laughs> but yeah, I, had, I was looking at the roof, and I was saying, Abbas, how am I going to stay, and I was imagining that, okay, I have to save the money, I'm not going to live a luxury life in Australia, mm. uh, I will live in a small apartment, which is like enough for me to sleep and eat, and like small necessary stuff, not a lot, I won't go out, hanging out, I will save the money and I won't put pressure on my parents and I will study very hard and then at the same time I had a fear that how I will study, man, it's, everything is in English and that's, that's a I new country, say, yeah. a new accent, uh, I was really scared and I had no confidence in me that I would pass mm. and then I came to Australia, boom, uh, first day in the class, I was how, uh, a week late, I walked into the class and the teacher, uh, I know her name is Simona, <clears throat> it was uh, engineering See something in junior related class, a uh, structure class. I'm civil engineer, by the way. So they asked me a question. They asked a question to the whole class, and with my big mouth, I said, I know the answer, and I didn't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and she made me write that stuff 100 times. It was really embarrassing in, the, in front of the whole class. And second time, she asked the same question, and another question, I did the same thing. Wrong answer. Uh, but yeah, the, everyone laughed at me. I was really <laughs> depressed. I said, man, what the hell is happening with me? <laughs> but then slowly, slowly, I started studying. Um, and guess what happens? The person who had the brain of, man, I'm going to fail everything. I will fail everything. It's hard for me to pass. And what happened? You managed to pass. I was the highest achiever oh, wow. of the class. Masha. 
no one have broke the record which I made five years ago. Mashallah. I had 95. The, the record before me was 89. And I have 95%. Mashallah, Still no one have gotten that record. That's amazing. So Alhamdulillah. And then I, I started teaching students. <laughs> for, for two years, I've been teaching students. So from, I don't you, you pretending to know the answer to actually knowing the answer. Yeah, and then, That's yeah, Alhamdulillah. So yeah, awesome. started studying from 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 the cry from the scratch. I will say the majority started from there, and then. Uh, so you've completed now. So this was your final year. Ah oh, yes. Uh, I can see. I can feel that really. Uh, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I saw the P today, <laughs> and I passed with the distinction. Look, Alhamdulillah, oh, I passed. I I was honored by the university. They gave me the thesis to write the thesis. I wrote the thesis. I didn't do the project. There's a difference between thesis and project. Yeah. If you want to do the thesis. You need to have a maximum of a minimum of seventy percent VAM, which is like three point two something GPA. It was really high, okay. and if you have that, then university offers you the thesis. And Alhamdulillah, they offered me the thesis. Alhamdulillah, uh, that's I'm awesome. very blessed with that. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with with the law. I, I can't have actually. I I cannot say. If I start counting, Habibi, if I if I judge what I have done or what I have give I have been given to the my abilities and my struggle and my strength, mm. I think. Uh, I can't compare. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those things, uh, subhanAllah, like, you think that everything is in your hands, but then you realize that sometimes you do something and it's, it's beyond your capabilities, but you manage to do it. And it hits you, you realize that there is something controlling you. So, uh, say we spoke about your, your journey from the educational perspective, so from Pakistan to uh, Australia and to university. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to speak about the re religious aspect. So, how was it coming from a, a religious environment of like Pakistan with mosque, Husseiniyat, and uh, a place where the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is is not as challenging as living in Australia, mm -hmm. where there's a lack of mosques, a la lack of all these <coughs> Islamic uh, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this is a really good question, Latif. To be honest, uh, and. Yeah, it is really challenging. But there was a there's a quote of Imam Ali al Islam, the saying of Imam Ali al Islam, uh it's in Urdu because I learn in Urdu means ke won't ke bachche ki tarah zindagi guzaro ke jo apni maa se madadar ka doodh bhi peeta hai lekin kisi ko apne par sawar nahi hone deta. Okay, I have no okay, idea what that I is. Know, <laughs> I know, I know. Just wanted to give some impression impression. <laughs> so it's, it means that live like the the child of a camel okay. who takes the or drinks the milk from his mother but he doesn't let anyone to ride over him on him so means take the benefit from the world but don't let the world to take benefit of you oh wow okay so i had that in my mind the the first thing i so this is the first step in australia and this is the first thing in my mind Allah. right and my journey started with this 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 thing and to be honest, Latif, Islam is, alhamdulillah, a complete religion. It is a religion which has, which teaches you how to deal in infinite scenarios or act in infinite scenarios. I tried to put myself in, in a lot of scenarios and Islam had the answer for it. So if you are following, so here it may take a minute but this is a really important question and if someone is listening then i want this thing to pass on sure. religion is nothing else but the way you live your life if someone says that he or she does not follow any religion that for me they are very dangerous people so today if they are smiling tomorrow they may be crying and day after tomorrow they may kill you because they don't have any rules Everyone needs to have a, even if they accept it or not, but they have a rules. Mm -hmm. I tell, I, I ask my colleagues many times, uh, if you are smiling today, would you be smiling tomorrow as well with me? I said, yes. I said, uh, would you come and slap me? I said, no. I said, why? Because this is unethical. I said, yes, it's un unethical for you. Because this is your religion. You, in your dictionary, in your rules, this is unethical. And there's a, there's a big issue with it because, like, for example, morality. See, Islam give a, gives us the true guidance of morality. This is, this, is the, this is how it's supposed to be and this is how it is, for example. But then when mankind is in charge of morality, you mm -hmm. see that they shift an idea that before would be insane and completely like, nah, no chance. Mm -hmm. Now it's accepted and if you don't support it, you're, you're some sort of, uh, 
weird human being that is backwards. Yeah, that's this is this is actually very true. Um, so for me, I looked into a lot of things, right? A lot of scenarios, a lot of rules, mm. and for me as a human being, I have to have the experiment before making a rule. Mm. I need to go through a process, and then after doing the after having the experience, I can say, okay, this thing is good. This is this, this thing is bad. Well, Latif, Alhamdulillah, I had Islam. Islam had all set rules for everything. For example, I talked to the girls, people, the, the people who have the, the mindset saying that Islam stops talking to the girls. Islam does not stop, does not stop you talk, talking to the girls, but it has the limits. It tells you, okay, this is a good limit, and if you ex- exceed this limit, that's when you are, uh, you, you are on a danger, or you, you shouldn't do that. Mm. So I, I take the guidelines from Islam, and I implement it, implement it on my life. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm 100% perfect, but that's where I get help from. That's what it keeps me on the right path. Uh, if Yeah, I'm not 100% right all the time, but there's something in my, in my heart saying, if I'm doing something wrong, it says, yeah, you're wrong, and then I get the right lens from Islam. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would say this, the saying of Imam Ali al-Islam, and the way I deal with the society, is the is the way Islam tells me to do. Yeah, so through living the guidelines of the yeah, Islam. Yeah, so I have a set rules. I don't need to think a lot. I have Islam. It tells me how to do it. And Alhamdulillah, I follow that. And it is 100%. I never had... In my whole life, I meet a lot of people. If you look at my phone, you will see the missed calls. And it's in the podcast so far, I've got few calls as well. I meet a lot of people. But no one would tell you that this person... This person's Islam stop like brought something between us and we are not good like he's not good people because he follows islam everyone says that he's a good person mm. because he has the moral values and then i tell them these moral values are not my moral values these are the moral values islam which islam has set for me that's that's truly beautiful um Sayyidna, i would like to thank you first of all for joining us today and blessing us with your presence uh, grandson of rasulullah from a heritage uh, the hashimi heritage um but also i would like to thank the viewers for participating and joining us in whether it's through the podcast or through the video and inshallah we will we'll try to aim to do more of these podcasts and if you did enjoy it share it around if you have any feedback for us do let us know and please do not forget us in your du'as for that is the, the source that we are uh, relying on assalamu alaikum rahmatullah